across Europe, most commonly in Scotland. There's a small flowering plant that grows in the rocky highlands called heather. It thrives in places most flowers can't and returns every year stronger than before. The name for the flower became a person's name, referring to the beautiful plant. And when one actress named Heather auditioned for the role of the lead character of Silent Hill 3, the development team decided that was the name they needed for their hero. It fit perfectly for a young girl who struggles and thrives in a place few others would survive. Heather's story is a dark coming-of-age tale, unique among the first three games of Silent Hill. The first two stories deal with older men looking for a lost relative. Heather isn't looking for anyone to save. She's seeking revenge for someone already lost. She risks her life to do so. But ultimately, what she's doing isn't searching for vengeance so much as avoidance, trying not to face the fact that her father is gone. Her journey is a tale of mourning in which she faces all the stages of grief, denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and ultimately acceptance after her revenge is complete. Her story is one in which she must grow up and become her own person while letting go of her past and her father. Little does she know that her own journey directly mirrors Harry's, a choice that represents her own steps into adulthood. She follows her father's footsteps in Silent Hill. Both of them visit a hospital level, a church, and an amusement park. They face similar bosses like the split worm and split head. They face similar dangers, working with an ally who has their own selfish interests, working against a religious figure trying to summon God. Their stories can be lined up next to each other, and multiple major plot points and aspects of the games match up. Heather goes through a journey to adulthood that mirrors her father's journey from years past, reflecting the fact that she is becoming an adult a hero, like her father. At the end of the story, they even face the same enemy, a version of God. And after, you can see Heather turning back to face the creature. Originally, there was going to be a sound played here of an infant crying. The journey for both people would end the same way, defeating God and rescuing a newborn infant. In many ways, Heather has the same journey as Harry. The first game was a tale of parenthood, reflecting how different ways of raising a child have different consequences. All the events of the game could have been avoided if Dahlia had been a better mother. Her abuse and mistreatment of her daughter led to the creation of the other world. Harry's choices as a loving and kind father lead to the end of Dahlia's plans and the rescue of Cheryl or Heather. The game sets up a comparison between two kinds of parents and shows what happens when you actually love and care for your child. Here, in Silent Hill 3, we see the opposite end. What happens to your child after you raise them? Multiple conversations and events in Silent Hill 3 tell us that Claudia was abused and mistreated, much like Alessa. She has come to believe the world is an awful, evil place and has to be destroyed. But Harry raised Heather with love and affection, in spite of her dark origins, and she has come to see the world in a realistic light. That there's good and bad, and it is up to you to try and make the best of it. Silent Hill 3 is a bookend to Silent Hill 1 not only because it continues the plot of that story, but because it reflects similar themes, issues of parenthood, and what happens after the child grows up and has to live their own lives without their parents. Though Heather was raised by a loving father and had a good life, her childhood has still come to a tragic end. Her father's sudden, violent death is traumatizing to her. And that trauma is reflected throughout Silent Hill 3, 
in symbols that represent childhood destroyed. The doll that Stanley Coleman gives Heather is a child's toy, turned into a grotesque gift, which is later beheaded. There's the dark, twisted carousel, the children's drawings and maps in the other world. Heather's normal childhood has been destroyed, and the consequences of that will stay with her for the rest of her life. Aspects of Heather's journey to adulthood deal with the unique challenges a young woman faces. Multiple puzzles and symbols relate to pregnancy, periods, and abortions, as well as issues of being stalked and watched by adult men. Heather's journey is the bloodiest and most violent looking of the early games, and Heather herself is marked with blood. Her journey begins with her father's messy, bloody end. Blood starts the tale, just as a girl becomes a woman with the shedding of blood. Another unique aspect of her story relates to her origins as Alessa. The first two protagonists were ordinary humans, but Heather is not. Early in the game, she has a premonition of events that occur later. Halfway through, she fights another version of herself, the memory of Alessa, and this reflects the fact that she is tied to the town and its power more than any other. Heather's father also has a fight on a carousel. He fights Sybil, the only person in the first game who is actually on his side. Fighting Sybil on the carousel has two separate outcomes, in which Harry is either able to save her, or has to face the reality of killing her and moving on by himself. Heather's boss is a part of herself, something she's been avoiding facing. While the fights are different, both are major turning points in their respective stories that define the fates of the main characters. And both occur on a symbol of childhood lost, because Harry has lost his daughter, and Heather has lost her innocence. There are a few interesting details in Heather's game that tell us a lot about her character. Her clothes are feminine yet practical and comfortable. Her hair is dyed but fading at the roots, and she has imperfections and freckles on her face, which she hasn't covered up. She looks terribly exhausted with heavy eyes, as if she doesn't sleep well. Her color scheme, orange and green, are complements to the color red, the color of blood. She's a teenage girl more interested in being comfortable than pretty, and there's something weighing heavily on her mind. More than any other protagonist, Heather's puzzles and progress through Silent Hill is dependent on her own brilliant mind. She performs chemical reactions multiple times. She thinks of out-of-the-box solutions, like the hair dryer in the water, and the poison with the butterflies. She's smart and has basic knowledge of literature and science. Other games heavily rely on riddles, luck, and trying things over and over again. Heather's puzzles are knowledge-based, more so than one and two. Heather also has power, something previous heroes haven't had. Besides her premonition, she also seems to have the power to change the other world herself, or at least to influence the time of the change. In the background of the game, we see Voltiel, the creature with the power over the other world, turning valves. The association is that the other world change has something to do with valves turning. Heather turns a valve herself at one point, the scene with the bathtub. In this scene, it's Heather who activates the change to the other world, a power that no one else has, save Valtiel. Heather is afraid of mirrors. The mirrors in her house are covered. She mentions hating looking at her reflection. The mirror in the hospital room reflects that fear, and is even deadly to Heather. It represents her ultimate fear, herself. At the beginning of the game, she doesn't remember her whole life. There's parts of herself that are unknown to her. She's afraid of what that means, of what she might really be. Is she a monster? Is she Alessa? Or Cheryl? Or Heather? But as the game goes on, she is forced to face herself, both in the sense that she is seeing her reflection, but she is also facing her past. At the end of the game, she's reconciled with her fear. She understands who she is and is no longer afraid, 
which is why she says she'll be going by the name Cheryl from now on. The other major theme Heather is forced to face is the reality of death. Her father's death specifically, but death in general as well. Accepting death is a reality of life is a big part of growing up. Major puzzles deal with this. The Tufui Ego Eris puzzle specifically. The words are a Latin phrase taken from tombstones. What you are, I once was. Whatever I am now, you too shall be. The reality that death happens to all, even you, one day. The Book of Lost Memories confirms this origin. Heather's story deals with motherhood and the birth of a goddess. She is the third incarnation of a female character with magic powers, who ultimately created the realm of the Otherworld of Silent Hill. These characters are mothers, creators, with the power to see the future. There are a lot of interesting connections between these three and the concept of the Triple Goddess. There are a lot of mythologies that have triple gods, or trios of magic beings who are seen as having similar powers or being aspects of one creature. The Norse had the Norns, the Greeks had the Furies, and the Irish had the Morigna. More universally, there's the concept of the crone or grandmother, the mother and the maiden, the three women who represent aspects of life and womanhood, or the aspects of time, past, present, and future. Heather and her previous incarnations have similar powers and story aspects that match this concept, and thematically could be seen as the triple goddess of the Silent Hill mythos. The idea can also be connected to the cult's faith. They only have three named figures after all, the goddess and two angels, Zuchilbara and Lobsilvith. The theme of three runs powerfully through the cult, taken not just from Christianity and the concept of the Holy Trinity, but also the idea of the Triple Goddess. Much like her namesake, Heather is a strong character who survives unspeakable odds, and she does it all in memory of the father who she loved so much. <laughs>